Yeah, I think I shared with you yesterday. If a person wanted to make a drum ASAP, it wouldn't be harmful to, to warm the temperature of this water up that I'm putting in the bucket to lukewarm. It will cut down to about a third the time that you need to actually soak the hide. Soaking it in cold water is a fair bit slower, but you don't ever want the water temperature to get up like really high because the skin will just fall to pieces. What we're going to do is we're putting in 16 sets of two closely spaced holes. Uh, a total of 32 holes. So to get 16 evenly spaced holes, it's like a big piece of pie. You fold it in half one way. Put your folds. And you'll see when I unfold this that just by folding it, it gives a fairly clear mark as to where. Only this way though, this is the hair side out. If you were to fold fold it the opposite way, you wouldn't have a you wouldn't see the mark as clearly. See, you can see the fairly defined lines in that. So that's two. What you do is match those two holes up, folding the hide in half the opposite way. This is going to make four. There's four holes. Then what we're going to do is take the first set of holes, fold it this way and match. That, by the way, is a telephone. It is, <laughs> quite a loud telephone. And the same on each corner. Keep matching the holes up. It's just continuing to go around folding the hide in half in between each set of eight holes. And that will give me 16, 16 sets or 16 holes. And while punching these holes, what I found in the past, in the earlier days of making my drum making experience, you really want to keep your prayer going and stay focused, focused on just how many holes you're punching and where you're punching them because there was one instance where I ended up with rather than 16 sets of holes, I somehow ended up with 15 sets of evenly spaced holes and to repeat that process i don't think i could do it to this day i don't know how i ended up with 15. when you have 16 going always punching the the second set of holes on the same side all the way around there there is one punched drum so i like to use a real nice uniform thickness, fairly good thickness to make my lace out of. Because you can't make can't make a good drum with, with crappy lace. Okay, so I'm thinking probably somewhere right around here will work for me. Trim it again, trimming off what I would refer to as too thin of hide to be making lace. There, it's starting to thicken up again right there. But being the rough edge of the hide, I'll cut that off because that's not something that I would want to make lace from either. And I can see a, a thin spot right there where you can see the hide folding. I want, also want to exclude that because that would be something that would probably break when you start to pull on it. Again, I'd rather make a good quality piece of lace as opposed to something that might break either during the making of the drum or the drying of the drum. This hide starts to shrink incredibly. Once the drum is made and tightened, when the hide starts to dry, that's where the voice of the drum comes from, is the tightening of the hide, the shrinking of the hide. 
the, the hide will start to crisp up and you'll start to have a voice of the drum. Now if I were to use a poor quality of lace, when the, this hide, when your drum hide starts to tighten, dry out and tighten, it has the ability to break the lace. Yes, for this 14 inch drum, I would cut my piece of lace 21 feet long. Now at the end when we make this drum, you're going to see that that allows for not only the lacing pattern back and forth across the drum, but it'll allow enough lace to form the handle and it will even allow enough lace after that to tie a loop to hang the dry drum up to dry. Take any uneven spots out of it to try and get a, a fairly nice piece of lace out of this. There's a corner there. We'll round that off. Yeah, that looks like a really nice thickness right there. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that in half. So again, we'll take one corner out of there for now. And this is where we'll start. Now what I'm going to do here is cut it a fairly fair bit wider at the very beginning, at the beginning of the lace. And then you can see I, I sort of narrow it up. And I'm pulling, pulling the, the lace away as I cut it. And it shows you a more true thickness of the lace. Because as I go, see up here I'm getting into a little bit thicker a hide so I can narrow the width of my lace up somewhat. Now, if we come back to this tab here, this is the end that's going to be anchored to the beginning of the drum anchored to the hide like so. So what I'm going to require is a set of holes to feed the other end of the lace back through. And I might as well punch those right now. That's, that's plenty big enough of hole to be feeding the end through and pulling it. And then what I'll do is put a little bit of a tip to that end tab so that it's easier to poke through the first set of holes. There, that's, that's prepped and ready, ready to go. So we will continue on. I'll round this corner off because I'll be coming past here again with my scissors when you're pulling the lace away from the piece of hide that you're cutting the lace from you want to have it start to stretch and it'll give you a better idea of what your end thickness of your lace is going to be if you cut that from dry hide you're not going to know what the stretch is and how it will thin up or not punched hole of the lace that we made the tab that we created at the beginning is now going to be anchored on one side of the beginning of this drum so we're going to go up, this being the hair side, down, this being the flesh or fat side, up. We're going to go up through the left, and this part, part isn't important. If you went up through the right, basically all we're doing is anchoring the lace. So that both sides are now on the bottom of this hide circle. Put it back through this hole and pull it all, all of the lace through that hole and it's going to create a, I guess you would say a lasso like such. Then we're going to take the drum frame. Most of the drum frames that my friend makes are flat on one surface and that's the side that you want to put to the skin so that the rounded edge of the drum frame is going to be at the bottom of the drum. But what we're doing when we put the drum frame on the hide is you want to measure, pull the holes that you've punched up and over the edge so you can see that they're going to be evenly spaced. Centering the frame is what this is, centering the frame on the hide. 
Now what we're going to do at the beginning of the process, you split the drum in half. You go directly through the center, pull the hide up and over the edge. And once the hide is up and over the edge, again you're going to go down through the right, up through the left, and you want to thread both holes at the same time so that you're not pulling the lace twice, once for each hole. Put your hand on the beside that so that it holds everything in place. And as you can see, we've successfully divided the drum in half. And then I'm going to take it and turn. You can see naturally how the, the lace goes down through the right, up through the left. It guides the lace to the left down through the right, up through the left. Watch my lips, down through the right, up through the left. After you've done on this second set of holes and all of them after this, after you've threaded the lace through the hole, through your next set of holes, you're gonna take the end and go underneath the last strand. So we're, com we're continuing on with this process, again going in a clockwise direction. My last hole to thread should technically be right beside, right here where we started. Should end up right here. Now at this stage of making the drum, and I normally when I'm teaching people to make drums, I always speak about the importance of the prayer. When I was taught to make drums in this fashion, I was taught the importance of the whatever energy it is that we have going on in our lives at this moment in time with the making of this drum is the energy that will go into the drum. Uh, I always stress the importance of at least trying to have some fun with it. Don't let frustration or impatience be your prayer because it will go into the drum because the way that I was taught by my elders is that this was once a living animal that gave up, gave up its life and gave up its robe, gave up its skin for the life of your drum. And the same as the wooden frame, it was once a standing living tree and it has the ability to absorb one's own personal energy because ultimately this is gonna be your drum. But the way that my Auntie Ellen White taught me it may not always be your drum. You may gift it to an uncle, an auntie, a grandpa, a grandma. You go figure, you might give it to one of your grandchildren. And that energy that you had going on when you made that drum will also be part of that gift. So it was taught to me that you, you try and have yourself in as good a way as possible because that's what's going into the life of this drum. I'm just straightening out the edges of the hide and making certain that when this part of the drum dries that at least as many of these folds that you can see here will come out because when this, this hide starts to tighten it will also tighten up here. The, the lace is, is going to restrain it from going back that way again. So there's only one way for this to happen. Once this hide starts to dry, with this lace holding it back, it has to tighten. And if you take all of these folds out, or at least tidy it up as best you can now, before we really tighten this drum up, and that's by far not quite tight. It's close, but it's not tight enough to go ahead and make the handles. So we're going to go back to where we anchored it to start, and thus the reason why I've gone underneath with the lace every time because when we come back to the tightening part I just have to go all of the laces on top. So you go back to the anchor and you start there. Start your tightening there and you just work your way on top by looking where, where this piece of lace goes. It goes here so you'd grab that piece of lace and you methodically feed it through. See, so you just follow the end of the lace. Feed it through. Tighten. Feed it through. And tighten. 
again this is where we started we anchored the lace this is where we end up the next set of holes to your right and you're going to take the end of the lace and you follow the one that split the divided the drum in half you're going to take the end of the lace and push it underneath everything and you're going to come up in between the middle divider and the next set of holes to the right and that's where you're going to pull your lace underneath all of the other lace like such and then you push it to the center this is centering up your handles then you're going to count one two three four because as you remember there were 16 sets of holes so we're now going to divide that into four groups of four so you're, we're going to be wrapping in this direction like that our first set of four and I have six wraps around that and what you need to remember as far out as this handle extends another one is going to extend out the other way and the same in this direction and in this direction and at the end of those six wraps what I'm going to do is put a half hitch on the furthest left of the four strands in this fashion and tightening that down and I'm going to go underneath in a counterclockwise direction underneath the next four one two three four in between the fourth and the fifth we're going to come up with the lace giving us our next group of four and on this second handle what you want to do after that first wrap is put a wrap with the lace around your hand like such that it gives you an ability to pull without the lace sliding through your hands and you want to snug that one as close as you can to the center pull it back up against your first handle and continue with five more wraps and now that everything is tightening up you can see how this one wants to it really wants to spread out that's because all of these are fairly tight now and this will be the last of the tightening so after you put two three or at the very most four wraps all of these ones have six after four wraps you probably want to stop and tighten that up and then put your last two on six again tighten that up pull the slack out of that looks like we could use one more because the lace was thinner and it gives you approximately the same size on this last handle I not only put one half hitch but I bury it with a second one because in the end if this very last knot comes loose again if that slack would feed its, its way all the way through the handle not something that you want then I go back up in the opposite direction of this last handle come up in between the two of the four strands and I tie a, a loop to hang the drum up the reason that I come the opposite direction of the last handle is that when you pick this up it will stand the drum up so that it will dry evenly this is how much lace we have left over again a 14 inch drum 21 feet 21 foot piece of lace and this is how much we have left over oh.